Still to come to the lighthouse this morning, Christmas crackers, a look at who's vying for the festive number one spot. Some exhibitionists, you can be sure. Now, it wouldn't be Christmas for some people without musicians battling it out for the festive number one spot. In the singles chart, we'll find out this Sunday who the winner is. Uh, the odds on favourites, the X Factor winner, Matt Cardle, but the end of 2010 has seen some really unorthodox challenges taking him on for the top spot. Our showbiz correspondent, Lucy Cotter, has been having a listen. <laughs> Classics like this, and who could forget this festive little gem from St. Cliff? Just all the Fast forward to the 90s, and the highlight was. <laughs> but by the noughties, X Factor fever had landed, with Cal's reign lasting four years till Rage Against the Machine snatched the top spot in an anti X Factor campaign. <laughs> So who's going to be the Christmas number one this year? Could it be the winner of the X Factor? Maybe it'll be Take That, maybe Rihanna, or maybe someone a little bit more unusual. <laughs> Surfing Bird is a surprise contender, currently number three in the download charts. We have ruffled a few feathers in the X Factor world, and we've rattled a few cages. And, uh, well, we're just waiting to uh, flap our wings and elevate into, into new heights. Cage Against the Machine offers up 4 minutes 33 seconds of silence. There's a lot of people out there who, who I know enjoy the X Factor, but there are those of us who think it, it dominates too much our media. What we're trying to do is clear a space and, uh, and annoy Simon Cow. And that's, I think, you know, it's become a festive tradition in this country, isn't it? Annoying Simon Cow. So. The more people that join in, the merrier, I think. But the force of the X Factor is strong. Matt Cardle is still on course to top the tree, so Christmas could come early for him and Mr Cow. Lucy Cotter, Sky News.